Hey, what's up you guys? It's Matt here, back again with another video. Uh, for today, we're just going to do a quick item review on these Wabanaki Suteo boots that I just got. And uh, we're just gonna go over the uh, material, quality, and construction of them, and then show them off in a few outfits just to show you guys how I would personally style these top style of boots. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll just do three to four outfits and just uh, show you guys a multitude of, of ways to wear them. And it should be a pretty informational and uh, quick, fun video. So much like their other Wabanaki silhouettes, uh, the Wabanaki Suteo features this engineer style boot. Uh, so what that refers to is sort of like a Chelsea toe uh, with a long um, shaft. And uh, as opposed to other Wabanakis, uh, this features a leather stacked heel outsole. Um, the other Wabanakis that came out previously featured a Vibram rubber wedge sole. So for example, this is the Wabanaki blanket folk. As you can see, it has this um, rubber wedge sole from Vibram. So at the time, this was the very first Wabanaki silhouette that featured this heel. Um, this and now their brand new Wabanaki that they just came out with. I forget what the name is. I think it's the weight. Um, they both feature this uh, leather stacked heel midsole. Um, another feature of this is the indigo dyed linen PZ fabric insert, um, which is a really nice detail. A really nice contrast to this beige or sand color. You get this really nice indigo dyed fabric insert. And this is what the bottom looks like. So primarily leather, and then they actually do feature this rubber traction pad on the forefoot along with the heel, just to give it a little bit more stability and uh, reduce slippage. As you can see, it has a little bit of visible and branding, um, handmade Goodyear welted and then size nine and a half. Um, you can actually see the Goodyear welted stitch coming through. So what they actually do is hand stitch the um, outsole of the boot to the actual uppers. So, if you see those um, stitching there, it runs all the way across and down into the outsole of the boot. And what that does is ensures uh, longevity, durability, and then once this outsole actually wears down, you can uh, get it replaced. So realistically, if the uppers are in good condition, these boots can last a very, very long time. Uh, size nine and a half. I do recommend sizing one half size uh, up from your true to size. So I'm personally a size nine and the nine and a halfs fit me very well. Um, the shape of the toe is pretty narrow. So that size up actually gives you um, the optimum amount of room kind of for your toes. So they're not like very scrunched. I would say if you're if you have a, a narrower for, foot, you can actually go true to size. But for me, I have a slightly wider foot, so half size up uh, was best for me. Uh, for the construction, we have a very very nice UK vegetable tanned cow suede, and this cow suede is a very hairy and uh, textured. So as opposed to other boots from this era, this suede actually has a nice. Uh, rough hand feel. Um, these Briggs from a similar era, as you can see, have a very fine and not as hairy suede and kind of like softer to the touch. So I really like the contrast here, especially because um, texture is a very cool thing visually and um, physically to see in footwear. So I really, really like the suede used on these. So as you can see, this is a fully one piece construction. So it kind of wraps around on both sides and then they stitch it right along the middle there. And you can see a lot of hand stitch details like right here. And moving on to the shaft, the shaft is comprised of two suede inserts stitched together at the center. And then also features this really, really nice um, fringe detail at the back here and this is also hand stitched as you can see here's the inside really really nice um, handmade details and quality you can see on this boot and then finishing it off we have a custom red maroon velvet detail on the front and then features a hand stitched uh, leather tongue tab 
with the hand-painted symbol. So the black peace sign is synonymous with the spring summer 2014 collection. So that's when these boots actually came out. And uh, here's the backside. So you can see Goodyear handmade and then a little bit of Visvin branding on the bottom there. And they have the size and then the made in China stamp on the inside there. So yeah, that is the boot. Uh, primarily, I like to style these with um, slimmer pants. Not too slim to where the shaft actually gets crumpled, but wide enough to fit the width of the shaft. But because the foot is pretty narrow, um, I like the look of a slimmer tapered fit on these boots. Kind of gives it like a rocker aesthetic. And yeah, so I'll show you guys a couple outfits, how I would style these. Um, and you guys can get a better sense of how they look on feet and whatnot. Um, they also do feature a leather insole and a cork footbed um, and then leather lining as well. So they're very comfortable on foot. Um, I tend to go sockless with these, much like most of my Vism footwear. He makes his footwear with pigment-free leather lining, which allows you to go barefoot without it being very uncomfortable. The leather lining is very breathable and absorbs sweat, um, so they won't actually end up stinking after a while. Also, the cork footbed molds to your feet over time, as most of you know. Um, but yeah, so really happy with this pickup. So let me show you what they look like um, on a few outfits. Okay, so for the first outfit, I have a green trucker jacket from a brand called Mine Italy. Uh, it actually uses a patchwork design of a bunch of vintage military tent uh, fabrics, which is really cool. Uh, underneath, I have a Visvim Jumbo Alumni Graphic T-shirt. Uh, on bottom, I have a pair of vintage Levi's 505 uh, jeans in black and they're kind of washed and damaged and then on bottom obviously I have the Wabanaki Suteo boots uh, the Levi's 505 definitely has a ta more tapered leg compared to the 501 so that is the cut that I'm leaning more toward uh, because this is sort of like a slimmer boot and yeah so that is the first outfit kind of like a rugged military Americana style aesthetic and uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Okay, for the second outfit, I have a indigo dyed uh, Visum Kilgore Kapala in a really nice sun faded corduroy. It has some nice patchwork details. Uh, below it, I have a light blue Ampless Crash t-shirt. Um, it has really nice distressing and kind of like crash detailing everywhere throughout. Uh, on bottom, I have 01 Slim Damage 31s. Um, so, just features a bunch of uh, patch and repairs throughout the denim, and then this really nice washed out, um, kind of like vintage light wash fabric. And then, obviously, on bottom, we have the Wabanaki Suteo boots once again. Uh, 01 Slim obviously gives me that slim tapered leg that I'm looking for. Uh, pair with this boot and um, yeah let me know what you guys think about this second outfit okay for the third outfit on top we have a ivory mechanics jacket and a German cord fabric um, actually features really nice uh, distressing and damaging uh, throughout the fabric underneath I have a heather gray jumbo tee um, moving down below, I have a sort of navy wash pair of Gifford pants in a woven PK cotton fabric and features this really nice repair work here on the knee. And then we have the boots themselves. Uh, this is probably as wide as I would go in terms of pants with these boots. I think the leg opening is around eight inches. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about this third look. Okay, for the last outfit, we have a Visum Willard crash jacket in a really nice herringbone twill fabric. Uh, features really nice damaging and repairs. And then I had the elbow actually patched with a uh, navy bandana as well. 
Underneath we have a John Elliott Folsom tee. So it's kind of like a regular fit tee with a lot of distressing and holes and such throughout. Um, underneath I have a pair of All One Slim uh, Fluxus Corduroys. Uh, this is an indigo and mud dye um, fabric. And then down below we have the Wabanaki boots. And yeah, that is the the final outfit. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please comment down below what you thought of the boots and also what your favorite outfit was. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Grail. The links will be in the description below. Also put post notifications both on YouTube and Instagram so you don't miss any of the visit content or visit listings that I'll be doing in the future. Thanks for watching and have a good one.